What's up guys, Asian here again with another build video and today we're going to be going over the Nightblade Healer. So Nightblade Healers uh, have seen a few changes here and elsewhere. Uh, a couple of their abilities have been adjusted a little bit here on the Nightblade uh, skill line to kind of give them a little bit more group utility. Um, but Nightblade Healers still kind of fall a little bit short compared to Templar, Sorks, Wardens, and Necromancer Healer. And that's, and that's mainly because even though some of the abilities, uh, Nightblade abilities, have been kind of changed to give us a little bit of more group utility. Nightblade still do not provide any sort of unique synergy through any of their class abilities outside of their ultimate abilities. And because synergies are actually very important for both stamina DPS and tanks now with the introduction of Lokestes for stamina DPS and obviously Alkash on tanks, uh, Nightblade healers are not particularly strong healers in endgame content uh, just because they don't they lack a synergy. And that being said, Nightblade healers in terms of raw healing potential are actually quite strong. They have one of the stronger burst heals in the game. But the lack of the synergy really hurts it when it wants to uh, if you do want to start getting into more endgame content. Now you can you do have very strong heals, it's just the overall lack of a synergy does hurt it in if you want to get into sort of like end game score running groups so just like the rest of our build videos we're going over gear skills attributes everything you need to know to basically recreate this build yourself now as a support role you'll need to have access to a lot of different skills and a lot of different sets uh, in order to adapt to the situation whether that's a specific trial a specific a specific fight or even a specific strategy so I will be going over a bunch of the most common sets and skills that you're going to have to, on hand as a Nightblade healer. Now obviously as a support role you don't have a DPS parse so instead we'll be talking a little bit uh, behind the philosophy of healing uh, and how Nightblade healing differs from other classes uh, and go on from there. So without further ado let's go ahead and get started here first with our gear. So again this is just one of several different combinations that you can wear uh, as a Nightblade healer. Uh, so there are many different Monster Helm sets, many different combination of sets, and we'll be going over uh, all of these sets uh, in due time. Starting off first with our Monster Helm. So we're going with Symphony of Blades. This comes from Depths of Maltar, so you do need to have access to the Wrathstone DLC in order to get this set. Really strong support set for DPS, tanks, and even your other healer as well. So when you heal an ally who's under 50% of their primary resource, you restore 23-25 magic or stamina, whichever maximum is higher every second for 6 seconds. This effect can occur every 18 seconds. So if you decide to go ahead and do the math, this actually ends up being about 775 resources per second in terms of combat generation. So in terms of magic gen and stamina gen, this basically just doubles it up. So you're looking at about 1500 magic regen and stamina regen if you're able to practice on cooldown. Really, really powerful sustain tool here, both for 4-man content and for 12-man content, and you really see it shine when you have multiple support roles running multiple sets of Symphony of Blades. A particularly strong set that I would recommend every support role pick up. Moving on to our body set, we're going with the Perfected Ola Rime, still the best set for healers to have on hand uh, for that major courage buff. Even though Spell Power Cure does also provide major courage, Ola Rime has just uh, just completely blows Spell Power Cure out of the water. It has a lot more advantages that Spell Power Cure uh, doesn't have, uh, so this is definitely a set that you want to hold on to. This comes from Cloudrest. The perfect version comes from Vet Cloudrest. Uh, armor comes from plus one, plus two, and plus three. Jewelry from plus two and plus three, and weapons from plus zero. So you do need to have a team that's able to complete this on plus one in order to grab the, at the very least, the armor. If you can't have a team, don't have a team that can complete Vet Cloudrest plus one, then you can always just go with normal Cloudrest. You would get the normal version of Vestment of Ola Rime, which lacks the max magical bonus on the five piece. The actual five piece unique effect, the major courage effect, still remains the same between both sets. So it's kind of up to you whether or not you're able to get the perfect version of the set or not. For our second set, we're running Infallible Aether. This is a base game set, so this comes from any of the three Craglorn Trials. 
So while at first glance it looks like a DPS oriented set with spell crit, minor slayer, spell damage, and spell crit, uh, the unique 5 piece is more oriented for healers rather than DPS. So your fully charged heavy attacks deal an additional 903 damage. Enemies you damage with your fully charged heavy attacks are afflicted with minor vulnerability for 10 seconds. Now while it does say fully charged heavy attack, it does not need to be fully charged as long as you are channeling a heavy attack on your lightning or resto staff, depending on which bar you have this active on you will get the minor vulnerability going. Now, heavy attack builds have kind of fallen out of favor quite a few patches ago, with the only sole exception being potentially magic at sorcerers. Um, so, heavy attack builds, not as common, and even a heavy attack pet sork is kind of not as good as a light attack rotation on a pet sork. So, usually this set ends up falling onto a healer in order to maintain. Now, Nightblades do have a class ability that will apply minor vulnerability but in Velpal Aether is a lot easier to proc and it's a little bit safer and it's also more consistent. So you still want to use Velpal Aether even though you have a class source of minor vulnerability. Now in terms of weapons and enchants, so we'll talk about all the enchants and traits and all that stuff before we go ahead and go over the different sets that you want to have on hand. So our Lightning Staff back bar is going to be infused with a Shock Damage enchant. It can also be a Crusher enchant if you would like, if you're responsible for maintaining Crusher. And on our front bar, I have infused with a Crusher enchant. So this particular instance, we're assuming that we're responsible for both the Shock Damage enchant to maintain Concussed uptime for the Off Balance, and we're responsible for the Crusher enchant. Now, for your Restoration Staff bar, you have a few options when it comes to traits. So for example, if you want stronger heals, you can go with Powered. Nurn Hone gives you spell damage, which increases not just your healing, but also your damage output. So if you want to put a little bit more damage out, Nurn Hone's not a bad choice. Defending gives you some more resistances to improve your overall survivability. Uh, and Charged will give you a better chance to apply Concussed if you have a Shock Glyph on your back bar. So pretty wide options when it comes to weapon traits for your Restoration Staff. Enchant options are also just as varied. You can go with Absorb Magicka if you want just some raw sustain. Go with Weapon Damage to improve your healing strength with the additional spell damage. You can go with a Weakening Glyph to reduce the damage that the boss deals to you and your allies. So a lot of different enchant options here. The back bar, I typically will just say stick with infused. Um, it's just the best option there because you typically will have block aid down to help proc off bounce. So you might as well stick with infused to get the stronger and more frequent enchant procs. For jewelry, pretty much all healers are running Mac, uh, Magicka, so Arcane as your trait here. Uh, you could go with Infuse for the stronger Enchant Glyph, but you do lose out on some healing strength from losing the Max Magicka, as well as some indirect sustain by having larger Magicka pools. For Enchants, you really have three main options here when it comes to Enchant Glyphs, so arguably two. Um, the two best ones are going to be either Spell Damage or Magicka Regen Glyphs. So this is really going to be dependent on how much Regen you have and how much Spell Damage you have with your specific sets. Some sets have more Spell Damage, other sets have more Magicka Regen. The general rule of thumb that I go for is I want to hit as close as I can to 2000 Magicka Regen and 2000 Spell Damage before any buffs, before things like Major Sorcery, before things like um, Major Intellect. So I usually adjust my enchants accordingly in order to figure out, uh, get up to those 2,000 uh, kind of benchmarks there. So depending on how you have your set set up, uh, you generally speaking will be able to enchant your specific jewelry depending on your specific gear combination to account for that sort of balance there. It also does matter what Mundus Stone you're running, so if you're running, for example, the Atronach, which gives you more Magicka regen, you could also invest more into spell damage because you can use the Atronach to kind of make up for that uh, loss in regen. For armor, I like the Vines on my small piece with the Max Magicka enchants, so that should be Max Magicka, not Max Stamina, uh, and then infused on my large pieces with Prismatic enchants. Now you can also go with the Vines on your large pieces as well. If you would rather go that route, it's perfectly fine, it's up to you how you want to do it, but I would recommend going with the Prismatics on your large pieces here. They get the extra health and the extra stamina. The extra health from the Prismatic Glyphs allows you to run regen food, either Clockwork Twitch's Filet or Witch Mother's Potent Brew. They give you some more regen uh, that way, so the additional health from Prismatics are really, really strong. So definitely have the pros of those Prismatics on your large pieces there. Now, moving on to some other sets that you want to hold on to. We're going to go through these in relatively alphabetical order, so just bear with me while I go through all different sets. So starting off with the dungeon sets. You have quite a few dungeon sets that you're going to need to farm for as a healer. 
we have starting off here with Sanctuary. So this comes from Banner Cells. It's the base game set. It increases your healing received by 12% for you and up to 11 people within 10 meters of you. Sanctuary is one of those sets that you want to definitely have on hand, but it is not gonna be you're not gonna be expected to wear it very often. And that's mainly because in ESO, it's actually quite easy to overheal. So overhealing basically means you heal for more than the actual damage worth. So if somebody's down for 8k and you haven't heal for 10k, you overhealed by 2k. So ideally, you'd want to overheal as less as possible or as little as possible. So having the additional healing received buff basically allows it makes it really easy to overheal. Now in some instances you do want the healing received buff. So for example in Clodris to combat Baneful Mark and potentially in Lacestis hard mode uh, to help heal people through that ice prison. In those situations Sanctuary is quite strong. It still has some caveats, you still need to be within 10 meters um, so you still have to kind of pay attention to how you use Sanctuary but it is pretty strong in those scenarios where uh, you want to have the additional healing received. But in most scenarios, you don't want to run Sanctuary because you're already overhealing or you have a, or you are running the risk of massively overhealing. Moving on, we have the Worm's Raiment. This comes from Vaults of Mana, so this is another base game set. It reduces the cost of magic abilities by 4% for you and up to 11 other group members within 28 meters of you. A really strong set overall. Especially the more magic DPS you have, the stronger the set becomes. So obviously if you have pretty much all stamina DPS, then you pretty much don't need to run a worm at all because it's only really affecting the healers and the tanks. And you want to more optimize for your DPS rather than your support roles there. Uh, so if you don't have any magic DPS, don't bother running worm. But if you have magic DPS, then worm is a good option to run. You also have Yorvold's Guidance. It's come from Scale Color Peak, so this does require you to have a DLC, in this case, Dragon Bones. This increases the duration of all major buffs, minor buffs, and damage yields you apply to yourself and allies by 40%. So this affects things like minor mending that you might apply yourself through healthy offering. Um, so pretty nice uh, to have that there to give you a little bit more leeway when it comes to applying buffs. But the main reason why you would be running your Vault's Guidance is to improve the major force uptime from your aggressive Warhorn. So the base duration is 9.5 seconds. With your Vault's, it boosts it up to 13.3 seconds. Basically gives you higher Warhorn uptime, which allows your DPS to deal more damage because major force is active for a longer period of time. Uh, and that is pretty much it for the dungeon set that you want to have on hand as a healer. Uh, overland sets, there really aren't any overland sets that are particularly useful for healers, uh, both in base game and in DLC land. Uh, really not that many, if at all, that you want to hold on to. Uh, in fact, we can't think of really any light armor sets that would be particularly useful. Maybe Bright Throat if you want just raw Magicka and Magicka regen, but that doesn't provide any group utility. So avoid farming for overland sets. A lot of them are not going to be particularly useful. When it comes to trial sets, there is one set that is potentially strong, uh, two sets if you want to include one that's kind of mediocre at best. So first one is going to be uh, Eye of Navintas. So this is an interesting set to run. So when you, or I should say, when an ally activates one of your synergies, you and the ally who activated the synergy get 12% cost reduction for non ultimate abilities for three seconds. This effect can occur every six seconds per target. Now on any other healer, Eye of Navintas is actually not a terrible set. It's not going to be the best set, so it's probably like a tier C set, uh, so third tier set. But on a Nightblade where you don't have a unique class synergy, this definitely doesn't make it particularly strong. In fact, the only synergy that you're really going to be able to throw out as a Nightblade healer would be the one from the Indaunt skill line. So things like Energy Orbs, uh, Shadow Silk, the Blood Altar synergy, and obviously your Nightblade class ultimates are also use synergies as well. So I have Navintas, not a particularly strong set on Nightblade healers, um, but if you want, you can certainly farm it if you'd like this come from Sunspire, so do need to have access to the latest expansion elsewhere. The other trial set that you might want to consider picking up is going to be Master Architect. So, oops. So Master Architect uh, comes from Halls of Fabrication, so you need to have access to Vardenfell in order to farm for this set. This is mostly used on Magicka Nightblade DPS or Magicka Templar DPS or Magicka Wardens. Not really used too often on Magicka Nightblades, but Nightblades do have a really cheap ultimate, Soul Harvest, for that costs 70 ultimate. 
So uh, if you want to kind of play an off DPS, off healing role, then you can certainly run Master Architect there and four man content. It gives you and closer to allies in 28 meters of you Major Slayer once you use an ultimate ability. Uh, so not particularly strong in 12 man content. Again, usually it's going to be a DPS that's wearing it. But if you want to do off DPS, off heals for four man content, perhaps you're doing one tank three DPS, uh, then you can certainly run Master Architect as one of your sets in those scenarios there. Now in terms of monster helm sets, you do have a few monster helm sets that you want to have on hand here. Going from the top and working our way down here again, uh, first set here is going to be Sentinel Rakugam. So this is a set that comes from Darkshade Caverns 1, so base game set here. Uh, so when you heal yourself for an ally, you have a chance to summon a Dormer Spider that heals for 13, 19 health and restores 5, 24 stamina to you and your allies within 5 meters every second for 8 seconds. So this is a nice heal and also a stamina return. So pretty nice for stamina DPS. The more stamina DPS you have, the better Sentinel Rikugams becomes. So if you're running pretty much all magical DPS, Rikugams is pretty much going to be, I won't say useless, but it definitely loses a lot of strength if, uh, if you have pretty much all magic DPS. Um, but if you have a lot of stamina DPS, this is definitely a set that you want to uh, farm for. Moving on. Earthcore got nerfed in elsewhere, so instead of healing everybody within the area, it only heals the lowest health target in the area. Now, it is a very strong burst heal, and it will always proc when you need it, so it will never proc unnecessarily. It always procs uh, when somebody is under 50% health. However, the change that basically makes it only heal one person rather than all people does not make it very useful, or I should say it makes it less useful on a healer now. So while it is still a halfway decent set it is not a set that is gonna be a staple in your healing setup moving on we have bogland the night flame this is a very classic healer monster helm set to get this is a base game set so it comes from elden hollow 2. when you heal a friendly target you have a chance to summon a totem for six seconds that heals you and your allies within five meters in this case we're 43 82 health every second the chance is five percent but it does proc uh, it does have a chance to proc with each individual heal that you do. So if you throw out, like, say, an orb, or you throw out a healing springs and it hits six people, you have six individual chances for Bogdan to proc. So it actually does have pretty nice uptime, even though the, the proc chance doesn't seem very high. This is just one of the strongest raw healing Mosh Tom sets in the game. It does 4 to 3 82, which is significantly more than Senla and Rukugams, and it's also an AoE heal. It's a really, really strong AoE heal here with Bogdan. Uh, and then beyond that, it's pretty much all of the Mirage Tome set that you're going to want to hold on to. Troll King has some niche uses here, for example, in Cloud Rest to combat Baneful Mark and in Lacastes Hard Mode to deal with the Ice Prisons. Uh, but outside of those two fights, Troll King is not particularly strong uh, for PvE healers. But if you want to pick it up, if you do plan on doing Sunspire or Cloud Rest, then you can certainly pick up Troll King. Moving on to our character sheet here i am a breton bretons are going to be one of the better races for healing it's often considered to be one of the best if not the best race for healing here Bretons get 2,000 max magicka, 100 additional magicka regen, and they get 7% cost reduction to all magicka abilities so combine this with the night blades naturally high regen and you have quite you really much have no concern about magic to sustain as a Nightblade. So really, really strong combination here, Breton, Nightblade. Uh, other races that are going to be particularly strong are going to be Argonians and arguably High Elves as well. So Argonians get 1,000 max health and 1,000 max magicka, so you get a little bit of additional survivability. You have some sweet sustain through the potion pass they have, which restores 4,000 magicka health and stamina, no matter what potion you drink. So some nice sustain out of that passive there and then they get some additional healing done racial passive as well so in terms of raw healing argonians are pretty strong overall now if you want to also play a magic and night blade dps on the side high elves or dark elves are going to be a good option as well so both of those two races get 258 additional spell damage which does affect your healing so still really nice passives there high elves got 2000 max magicka and Dark Elves get 1875 Max Magicka. Uh, so if you want to kind of play as a DPS on the side, High Elves and Dark Elves are two other good options there. 
in terms of attributes we have all points into max magica now if you want to shift some points into max health you can certainly do that as well uh, depends on how survivable you think you are uh, if you need some more survivability you can certainly put some more points into health that way and give up a little bit of max magica there's more leeway here as a healer compared to a dps um, because like i mentioned earlier it's fairly easy to overheal so taking some magica out is not necessarily a bad thing you can see here with no points in health as a breton with three prismatic enchants that are infused we're sitting at about 18k max health which is pretty much on the money where uh, kind of the recommended health is that healers want to have uh, before you have things like minor toughness and ebon for Mundestone, we're going with the Atronach for additional Magicka regen here. You can also go with the Ritual for the additional healing done bonus. If you're going with the Atronach, you can invest some more points into spell damage to jewelry enchants and vice versa for Ritual. You can invest into regen glyphs on your jewelry enchants if you're in the Ritual. Um, you can also go with the Apprentice if you kind of want to double down on the whole off DPS thing that gives you just raw, raw spell damage. Um, so if you want to double down on the DPS and the healing, then Apprentice is not a bad choice either. We are a vampire, you don't necessarily have to be a vampire, so at stage 2 you get 10% additional magicka regen, at stage 3 you get the undeath passive, which gives you some damage mitigation once you fall below a certain threshold of health. The downside of being a vampire is you do lose a lot of health regen and you take more damage from fire abilities. Just keep that in mind, you don't necessarily need the 10% additional magicka regen from vampirism, but if you have trouble sustaining your magicka in trials, it might be worth exploring getting vampirism. Then for food, we're running Clockwork Switches Filet, the gold food, the gold regen food, this has been nerfed in elsewhere, so the max health and max magicka is down a little bit, but the magical regen was buffed uh, a little bit. So this gives us some survivability, it gives us some max magicka for improved spell power, some improved healing strength, and also gives us some magical regen as well. You can also use Witch Mother's Potent Brew, which is going to be slightly weaker, uh, but it is cheaper and easier to obtain than Clockwork Switches Filet. Now, if you don't mind losing the max magicka, but you do want celestial survivability, then you can also run Orsgar's Red Frothgar. And this is a blue food from uh, one of the Rothgar side quests, which gives you 5,000 max health and 495 magicka regen. It does not give you any max magicka though, so you will be losing some healing strength that way. But if you want some raw survivability and raw regen, Orsgar's Red Frothgar is a solid option for food. Moving on to our skill bars. We're going to start with our front bar, this is the Restoration Staff bar. We have Energy Orb, Illustrious Healing, go with either more so Illustrious Healing or Healing Springs. Combat Prayer, Healthy Offering, uh, you have Funnel Health, this is a flex spot here. Then you have Incapacitating Strike for the Reeve bonus, uh, but you do have a couple of options when it comes to your, ability, your ultimate here. On our back bar, we have Efficient Purge, this is a flex spot. Refreshing Path. Debilitate, this is also arguably a flex spot here. This is a application of Minor Magicka Steel uh, for 10 seconds. Ellie Drain will also apply Minor Magicka Steel and it also applies Major Breach. It also costs zero Magicka and applies it over a much longer period. Uh, but the Debilitate does cause some damage, so you're able to provide some additional DPS that way. Siphoning attacks for the sustain, and then we have block 8 of storms for the enchant procs as well as the off bounce, and then we have aggressive warhorn, the classic support ultimate. Now in terms of flex abilities here, so all of your nightblade ultimates are going to be good options for flex ultimates, so boltering darkness gives you major protection. Uh, which is a pretty strong survivability buff, it also gives additional synergy, uh, which gives them a very large heal. And then you have Soul Siphon, which is just raw healing power. It also gives a major vitality and it also gives additional synergy, uh, which deals some damage and also heals for the exact same damage done. So pretty strong ultimates across the board here. So any of the Nightblade ultimates are potential options here. Now, when it comes to flex spots from class abilities, you can run Sap Essence in Trash Pulls because it does heal you uh, for every enemy that you hit. Uh, so pretty nice, pretty strong burst heal in Trash Pulls, but not very useful in boss fights, as you can tell from the tooltip. Doesn't heal for quite a lot. Um, 1828 plus 20% is not particularly strong uh, when it comes to burst heal, but for AoE heals for even Trash Fights, very, very strong burst heal there. Uh, now, in terms of Healthy Offering versus Shrewd Offering, I like Healthy Offering for the additional minor mending that you get. Just increases your healing done, increases your overall healing strength. Uh, the actual health loss is actually not that strong, 
Uh, so if you think about it, 8 seconds, 4,000 health, that ends up being about 500 health per second, which is not that bad. Now, the one thing to be very mindful of with healthy offering is that the dot does stack. So if you use it two or three times, you actually have two or three of those dots ticking at the same time. So just be mindful of that if you want, if you, before you decide to spam healthy offering. Uh, funnel health is nice if you want to deal some damage. Uh, it's not a particularly strong burst heal, um, but it does act as a pretty nice heal over time. Under the shadow line, uh, if you want to give some additional minor maim, you can also run dark shade, which is not that bad, uh, but there's not really any many options here under the shadow line. Same thing with the assassination line, not much here. Uh, the lotus fan ability or the ambush ability provides minor vulnerability for eight seconds when you use it. So this is kind of a soft replacement for infallible aether here, but it does pretty much bring you right up against the boss. So we just, you know, it's a gap closer, so you will be right up against the boss here. So if you do need to be far away from the boss, not particularly useful because then you have to run pretty much all the way back to your position. But if in stack and burn fights, Lotus Fan is actually not that bad to maintain minor vulnerability. It opens up an additional healing set for you to use as uh, across either of your two healers. So you don't have to run IA any longer. Moving on from other abilities here uh, under the Destro Staff line. I've already talked about Ellie Drain. Ellie Drain is a basically free version of Minor Magicka Steel, uh, but Debilitate does deal some damage so if you want to increase your dps a little bit to you know contribute a little bit of, to group dps the build is going to be uh, not a bad option for the minor magicka steel but ellie drain is the traditional choice uh, to apply minor magicka steel but you do need to have this on the desert staff bar versus the debilitate which can be put on either bar under the resto staff line mutagen and healing ward or ward ally are two flex spots that you might want to consider running mutagen better off for four man content because it only heals up to two people at a time um, but it is situationally useful in trials. So, for example, if you are the kite healer in Cloud Rest, Mutagen is actually not that bad of a choice or Rapid Regen. Then, Healing Ward can be combined with the Black Rose Prison Staff for the Major Vitality to help boost overall healing done. So, situationally useful here because uh, you do basically need to use the Black Rose Prison Staff, but pretty strong because it does give you that Major Vitality when you do use it. If you ever need to use a shield, feel free to use either Morph of a Gnomon, Damp Magicka, or Harness Magic. Uh, under the Fighter Skilled line, you have Circle of Protection for the minor protection. Uh, it does use a uh, crap ton of stamina, uh, and typically speaking, tanks are going to be better in a better position to run this. Uh, you're going to be using this for certain fights where you're going to be stacked up for, for example, Execute or some sort of mechanic to help reduce incoming damage. So Assembly General, uh, Lacestis Hard Mode are two examples of where you want to use Ring of Preservation. Under the Psychic Order line, Mend, Spirit, or Symbiosis are pretty strong heals now. Uh, so that it was changed how it operates in elsewhere, so it's a lot easier to weave now. Uh, it's actually quite a strong heal overall. Um, so pretty nice to have on hand. Just have this option if you do have access to the Psychic Order line there. Under the Undaunted line, pretty much all these abilities are flex spots with the exception of Inner Rage, because that is a taunt. You have Overflowing Altar for the Minor Lifesteal as well as the Blood Feast Synergy. You have Shadow Soak for the Black Widow Synergy. You have Bone Surge for the Shield, the Synergy, and the Major Vitality Bonus. And we already talked about Energy Orb here. This is a staple because it's the strongest heal over time, the strongest ability in the game in terms of raw healing done. It also provides some additional resources uh, to your allies as well. So definitely want to make sure to have Energy Orb slotted. Under the Alliance War line, you can uh, we are talking about purge if either if you need to cleanse anything uh, and then you also have replenishing barrier as a potential ultimate flex spot for the additional magicka aid passive there as well um so when we let's go back real quick to the restoration staff line so there's four unique restoration staffs that affect each of these four abilities that i have unlocked so grand healing regeneration blessing of protection and steadfast ward all these all four of these unique restoration staffs can be used on the front bar here and then you can use your five piece on the back bar um, so common sets that you use on the back bar would be something like all the remake infallible aether or your world's guidance so these abilities are, uh, these staves are the Master Staves, the Asylum Stave, the Black Rose Staves, and the Maelstrom Staves. Starting off with the Master Staff. 
Master's Restoration Staff, this comes from Dragonstar Arena. You have to finish this on Vet to grab this set. Initial Heal of Grand Healing and either of the morphs restore 258 stamina to you and your allies affected. Now, back in the day when people used to use the other morph of orbs, Mystic Orbs, compared to Energy Orbs, this was actually a very strong set to run because your main healing ability was Healing Springs or Lustrous Healing. Now that Energy Orb does really nice healing, uh, Master Restoration Staff has pretty much fallen out of favor in a lot of endgame groups because you're not really using Grand Healing anymore as your primary heal, you're using Orbs as your primary heal. That being said, the stamina return is quite nice if you have a lot of stamina and DPS, um, but again, it's because it's so reliant on using Healing Springs or Lustrous Healing, it's kind of fallen out of favor for the very endgame groups. Now, the Asylum Staves are pretty strong, so the Perfected Restoration Staff, uh, when you class Blessing of Protection, the cost of your Magicka and Stamina Healing abilities are reduced by 30% for 3 seconds. The non-perfected version of this staff reduces it by 27%. Um, so this is just raw sustain, uh, not something you're really short of when it comes to Nightblade healers, but it's still a nice to have that option there. So you just throw down Comet Prayer, you can use two abilities afterwards for the 30% cost reduction. So typically speaking, orbs is going to be your most costly ability. Um, so really nice there for the additional sustain if you're in a fight where you're feeling your sustain getting taxed. Like the Black Rose Prison Restoration Staff, uh, the perfect version comes from completing it on Vet, the non-perfect version comes from completing it on Normal. The perfect version has that Magicka Regen bonus that the non-perfect version does not have. So the Steadfast Ward applies Major Vitality to your target for 3 seconds, increasing the healing taken uh, by 30%. So situationally useful, so a classic example of when to use this would be in Cloud Rest to combat Baneful Mark, as well as in Lucasti's Hard Mode to combat the Ice Prison healing debuff. Situationally useful, pretty difficult to obtain, Black Rose Prison is one of the hardest, if not the hardest, 4-man content to complete, uh, but it's well worth it because there's not many sources of Major Vitality, and having that readily available is pretty nice on a healer. And then finally, the Maelstrom's Restoration Staff uh, affects regeneration, so when you already critically heal through regeneration, you restore 800 Magicka, and this can occur every 4 seconds. Very similar to the Asylum Staff in terms of just raw sustain, uh, but again, regeneration is not particularly strong or very used very widely in trial scenarios, but if you do need to run it, for example, as a Cloud Rest Kiting Healer, then this is a nice option to get yourself a little bit of additional sustain uh, with the Maelstrom Staff. Moving on to our champion points, the CP cap is still 810, so that gives us 270 CPs across each of the different constellation types. Starting off with green CPs, 64 into Arcanist, uh, 49 to Nasty. I think these CPs are changed. Yep, I need to actually adjust these CPs here. So the CPs here are actually going to be 100 Arcanist and then 75 into Nasty here. Just take this up back. 75 into Nasty. Then we have uh, 33 Shadow Ward, 31 Tumbling, and 31 Warlord. Uh, the main points here are to make sure to get Arcanist and Tenacity up to good numbers, so either 75 or 100 for either of them. And then from there, you can kind of play around with your blue CPs as you see fit. For our blue CPs, the only two blue CPs that matter are going to be Elfborn and Blessed. Uh, healing done and critical healing done with magic abilities. The other nodes really don't matter all too much because they're all DPS oriented, so you can really put them however you'd really like here. So again, adjusting these here. So you can do something like, I don't know, 13 Spell Erosion, uh, you can do 27 to Ele Elemental Expert, you can do 30 to Master Arms, just as an example there. Finally, our red CPs, this is a one-size-fits-most approach, so this will give you some pretty decent mitigation across all trials, but it's not going to, you know, optimize or maximize your mitigation across any single trial. So you will need to shift some red CP points around depending on a specific trial that you're running. You have 81 Ironclad, 61 Thick Skin, and 64 in both Hardy and Elemental Defender. All right. That's pretty much it for all the build information, so now let's go ahead and talk about the philosophy of healing. So healers in this game pretty much have two jobs. Make sure you keep everybody alive, and then buff your allies, debuff the enemy. So in terms of keeping people alive, that's pretty simple. That's just your classical MMO healer job. Just put out heals. Uh, in terms of healing abilities I like to keep up uh, as a Nightblade healer, you should have, obviously, energy orbs. It's going to be your strongest heal because it's 
just is just an insane amount of healing done per second. Definitely try to have at least one orb out at a time between the two healers if you're running trials or if you're running four man content. Just make sure you pump out orbs as much as you can. Not only does it provide very good healing, it also provides additional resources for your DPS. And then from there, uh, in terms of healing, definitely try to keep up Refreshing Path. This is going to be a pretty strong heal over time ability for you to maintain. And then from there, if you are running Funnel Health, you can just weave Funnel Health. Uh, it will apply to other people. Sometimes it'll apply to the same person because it is relatively smart healing. Uh, but if you do need that burst heal, just go for Healthy Offering. You do, I believe, need to target them. You're running uh, with Healthy Offering, so just be mindful of who you're hitting with Healthy Offering there. You don't want to overcast it too much because that dot does end up stacking on you. In terms of buffing your allies and debuffing the enemies, this comes from various skills that you're going to be using as well as various sets that you're running. So obviously Obo Rime gives out the Major Courage buff. IA gives out the Minor Vulnerability debuff. In terms of abilities, Common Prayer gives out Minor Berserk, which is a very strong buff. At this point in Elsewhere, only Wardens have a native source of Minor Berserk, and has since been removed from Nightblades. So you pretty much need to run Common Prayer pretty much in all groups, unless your group is con solely consisting of Wardens. So Common Prayer lasts for 8 seconds, so you just want to make sure to cast that every 8 seconds to maintain that Minor Berserk. A lot of optimized groups will have their DPS split into 2 groups because Common Prayer can only affect 6 people at a time, uh, so just be mindful of that. You might need to double cast it to make sure everybody gets that Minor Berserk buff uh, depending on where your other healer is positioned. Beyond that, just make sure to keep up siphoning for the additional uh, resource return here. It's gonna, this is the sole reason why Nightblades have the greatest sustain out of all the classes right now. And then you want to make sure to maintain blockade as much as you can for the off balance as well as the enchant procs there. Um, generally speaking, you will not really be running illustrious healing. This is going to be more for those sort of high continuous damage scenarios because it does stack on top of each other. Uh, so you can have multiple stacks of illustrious healing going. So for some really strong burst heals going on. Uh, but it basically acts as a stacking heal over time ability there. So not going to be used all too often. Again, it's more for those high burst damage that's coming in in, in sort of waves, so to speak. Um, it's kind of hard to kind of describe healing without actually showing you guys healing. And unfortunately, I don't know any Nightblade healers that streams Vet Trials on a regular basis. Um, so if you guys know of any healing, uh, Nightblade healers that stream, please feel free to let me know and I'll add their, their stream description uh, down in this video description. In the meantime, you can always check out some of the classic uh, endgame healers. So Tabitha, uh, Sophie, Heals the Fields, Sal Anima, for some general advice about healing. Uh, if you guys have any questions about this particular build or healing in general, I can, you can always leave them down in the comment section below and I'll try to answer them to the best of my ability. And of course, if I don't know the answer, then I'll try to get find out that answer for you and get back to you as soon as I can. So that's it for this build video. Hopefully you guys found this informative and I'll see you guys in the next dungeon.